this is a true story. So I matched this girl on Tinder and I seen her about it that she likes sports. So I, I talked to her and then I'm like, oh, you like sports? What type, what type of sports you like? You know, Smooth operator. various cheater trends. Goes, oh, you know, I like football, basketball. I'm like, oh, football. Like, what team do you like? I'm a Dolphins fan. Me too. I swear to God, for the next 10 minutes, we talked about if Tua Tunga by the way should be the next quarterback for the Dolphins. I swear to God. And at that moment, I was just about to go, hey. <laughs> Girl, you so crazy. Listen, we've been knowing each other for two minutes, but I already know. Welcome back to the episode. Yeah, you knew this is going to be a video that I made. If you knew anything about me, you knew that I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. And why aren't you in uniform? So literally my first day back at college, they fired Flores. Anybody care about what I want? I do. Shut up. Get out. And I'm not going to get into why. There's a bunch of rumors flying around. Him and Tua were in well. Fuck you. Fuck me. Fuck you. But I will just say this, the fact that none of the players have come out on social media, none of the offensive weapon players, so Jalen Waddle, Devontae Parker, Mike Kosicki, none of those guys have come out, and most of the offensive line either, have come out and thanked Flores, I think speaks a lot because you've seen a lot of the defensive players have come out and said the exact same, oh, thank you so much, we're so shocked, you were a great coach. None of the offensive players, which I think says volumes to what type of coach Flores was. Now, don't get me wrong, Flores isn't dead. He's either going to get the Houston or Chicago job so good for him but from all reports it looks like unless miami makes a trade not for deshaun watson i don't think but for aaron Rodgers, also wilson someone like that who will be the quarterback for the miami dolphins next year yes sir and to me that's exactly what i thought he earned i thought he earned another year if they can build an offensive line so without further ado these are the five things the miami dolphins need to do to get into contention number one bring in an offensive minded coach now there are three and in fact i think one of the ones i'm going to be talking about is the betting odds favorite to be the new coach of the miami dolphins i'm going to start from my least favorite out of the three to the most favorite my least favorite is the offensive coordinator for the bills brian dayball all the credentials for him stack up he used to work with Tua. He's one of the main people who contributed with the idea that Josh Allen has become, in my opinion, the second best quarterback in the league right now. But one of the main things is he's worked with the Dolphins before. Maybe it's a comfortable thing that Steven Ross, hey, let's bring in an offensive coordinator that's worked with the system before so he understands. But then again, why would he come to the Miami Dolphins? Do not come. If he knows how bad the system is in Miami, which don't get me wrong, there is a fair amount of toxicity in Miami. Let's just put that out there. Why would he come there? I'm going to come. And also the idea that he worked with Miami, if they thought he was good enough, that he should have been the head coach then. But then again, it's two different systems. My second favorite one is actually Doug Peterson. Uh, obviously uh, a guy that I have history with. I really, really loved everything about his uh, package. I mean, the pros kind of speak for themselves. He's won a Super Bowl. He brought the Eagles back into relevancy. He made Carson Wentz an MVP season. I mean, let's be honest, he should have won MVP that year, even if he did get injured. He even worked with Nick Foles, and look what happened to Nick Foles. A package. Plus, he also knows how to build a very good pack staff. However, if you remember, the main con for me is that he burnt bridges. I'm trying to build bridges here? You couldn't fucking build Jeff Bridges. Case in point, remember the game two years ago when Jalen Hurts got benched because Doug Peterson knew that Jalen Hurts would win him the game? He burnt every bridge in Philadelphia. Then again, the city burns itself down every time they win, so maybe he was just learning from the people, but he's burnt every bridge that he had in Philadelphia. Is that the best sign? Especially after you fired a coach because he couldn't get along with the staff, he couldn't get along with upper management. My number one pick, though, is Mike McDaniels. Number one, this guy's hilarious. Excited to be here. Uh, equally excited for you guys to truly take in how physically imposing I am. So, wh whenever you guys are ready to start, let's do it. But number two, he's an offensive genius. I mean, he literally went to Yale. He is a genius. He's 38 years old, so he fits that LaFleur McVay field. And his credentials kind of speak for themselves as well. The San Francisco 49ers run offense has been one of the best in the years. And guess who was the one behind it? He's now been promoted to offensive coordinator. And look what's happened. At most times, the offense looks very good, if not great. The main takeaway is that they have to hire an offensive coach. There's no way that you can get away with getting a guy like Dan Quinn in, which don't get me wrong. Dan Quinn will be a fine head coach for what, the Vikings? But I don't want him. The second thing they have to do 
is resign players. Now, Nick Needham, Justin Coleman, Matt Collins, and all those other guys, Duke Johnson as well, need to be resigned. There are a lot of smaller players, but there are two main players that need to be resigned. One is Emmanuel Ogba. Emmanuel Ogba has become one of the most underrated pass rushers in the AFC. He's become a beast. Shut the fuck up and welcome to Burn! Let's just come. Let's <laughs> just come. I'm gonna come. He's become a beast. Let's just skip niceties. I think he has the most batted passes. If he was one step quicker, he'd have a lot more sacks. And don't get me wrong, you might be saying, oh, if he was one step quicker, then why don't you go and look for someone who's one step quicker? Only the like elite of elite of Aaron Donald has that extra step. The second guy that a lot of people have asked for Miami to resign is Mike Gesicki. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Mike Gesicki. I think at times he was the only one who really knew the playbook, but I think it all depends on the coach. Gesicki needs to be in a vertical style offense. He needs to be matched up with smaller corners, middle linebackers, because that's when you create the mismatch. That's when he becomes that elite tight end. Bruce Kuskiaski, <laughs> San Francisco University, tight end. <laughs> Next year, I hope to be a wide receiver. He's not a great run blocking tight end. And if you're going to use him as that, he's not going to get open it depends on the next coach and it depends on what style the next coach wants to play again that's why i kind of want mike mcdaniel because look at george kittle Bye. and speaking of coaches the number three thing that i think miami needs to do is hire a good staff this was the thing that got flores fired besides butting heads with greer and ross this was the thing that got flores fired he could never find a staff that would challenge him that would say hey you're wrong let's do this it is dire for Miami to get a good staff because guess what? There's a reason why we have the worst offensive line in the league and it's not just talent. There's a reason why the offense looked terrible at times and it's not Tua. And don't get me wrong, this isn't defending Greer. Greer has been atrocious at times. Look at the 2020 signing class. But this is what needs to happen. A good offensive line coach a good offensive coordinator, a good defensive coordinator. Hell, I'd even say promote within for the defensive coordinator position because the defense looked great last year for the second half. But you need to have a good staff that will challenge whoever the next head coach is. Moving on, the number four thing that I think Miami needs to do is buy offensive line talent. I'm done with drafting offensive linemen. We haven't had the best reputation for it. The only one that I can really see moving forward is a guy by the name of Robert Hunt, who I think has played pretty well deeming the circumstances. Liam Eikenberg has a huge question mark for me. Austin Jackson's had his highs and lows. The Solomon Kinley even make the starting lineup. Michael Dieter has been serviceable and we have no one for right tackle. I think there is a report that Miami can create over a hundred million in cap space this off season. Do it! Just do it! And buy offensive line talent with it because at this point, I'm tired of seeing Tua having the most QB pressures. There's no way he can throw the ball as far as you want him to with all the QB pressures around him. I I'm sorry, I'm not going to get into the Tua debate at this point, but it's become so stupid. You throw the ball in less than 2.5 seconds and see what happens. And the fifth thing, actually, before I get to the fifth thing, I was going to say bolster your middle linebacking core, but I think that kind of goes without saying, in a sense, the defense doesn't really need anything. I think if they keep doing the same scheme that they had, Miami will succeed, of course, because their corners are just so good, besides Noah Igbenogany, who we took over Jonathan Taylor. I am having a very bad day. But realistically, I think that's not as big as a problem as it could be. Jerome Baker has really stepped up in the second half of the season. Landon Roberts always does his job. Andrew Van Ginkle is a serviceable left outside linebacker. So I'm not really worried about something like that. Maybe more coverage help in the linebacker section. But besides that, I'd say we're pretty fine. The fifth thing I think Miami needs to do, and the final thing Miami needs to do, is get a running back and wide receiver. I know we said this last year, but last year came and went and nothing happened. For the wide receiver, you either have the draft or you can invest in Allen Robinson, Chris Godwin, who I know is coming off an ACL, but the dude's gonna be fine. ACL isn't what it was 20 years ago. Or if you want to, spend all of your money and get Devontae Adams, which then again, I don't know if Devontae Adams would leave if Aaron Rodgers stays, but let's see what happens. And with the running back, Again, you have the draft or you could trade. Someone like AJ Dillon might be a little steep, but I would love that. And maybe I'm just saying AJ Dillon because he's Jewish, 
However, I think this is a great pitch. Number one, you say, yo, we're going to get you a nice retirement home in Boca where you're schmooze with the old Jews there and they'll cavell and how well you play football. Or there are reports that Barkley and McCaffrey are both open to trades, which to me is a no-brainer. If you need to send a first-round pick for one of those guys, I know injury is a concern, but I'd still do it. I mean, then again, I would love A.J. Dillon. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. We take the ball from goal to goal like no one's ever. But if you can get Christian McCaffrey for a cut price, who says no? Especially when Christian McCaffrey is someone who is a dual threat wide receiver running back combo. Not the Cordell Patterson way, but the dude can catch it and run an open field. I mean, when he plays, he is one of the best running backs, probably the best dual threat running back in the league. And with Barkley, yes, I know the production has kind of been down, but you can always chalk it up to it's the Giants. The fact that he had a great year is astounding for him in the first place, because guess who is his coach? Those the five things that I think the Miami Dolphins need to do. What do you think that the Miami Dolphins need to do? Do you think two is the guy? In my opinion, I think he deserves one more year because we gave Tannehill like eight. So thank y'all so much for watching. Take care and I'll see y'all in the next video. That's all? That was fun. See you guys.